Section 24 of Library of the World's Best Literature, Ancient and Modern, Volume 1. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Nicholas James Bridgewater. Library of the World's Best Literature, Ancient and Modern, Volume 1. Section 24. Selected Epigram by Agathias. Agathias, 536 to 581. Agathias tells us in his Proemium that he was born at Myrina, Asia Minor, that his father's name was Memnonius, and his own profession the law of the Romans and practice in courts of justice. He was born about A.D. 536 and was educated at Alexandria. In Constantinople he studied and practiced his profession and won his surname of Scholasticus, a title then given to a lawyer. He died, it is believed, at the age of 44 or 45. He was a Christian, as he testifies in his epigrams. In the sketch of his life, prefixed to his works, Niebuhr collates the friendships he himself mentions with his fellow poet Paulus Silentiarius, with Theodorus the Decemvir, and Macedonius the ex-consul. To these men he dedicated some of his writings. Of his works, he says in his Proemium that he wrote in his youth the Daphniaca, a volume of short poems in hexameters, set off with love tales. His anthology, or Cyclus, was a collection of poems of early writers, and also compositions of his friend Paulus Silentiarius and others of his time. A number of his epigrams, preserved because they were written before or after his publication of the Cyclus, have come down to us and are contained in the Anthologia Graeca. His principal work is his Historia, which is an account of the conquest of Italy by Narses, of the first war between the Greeks and Franks, of the great earthquakes and plagues, of the war between the Greeks and Persians, and the deeds of Belisarius in his contest with the Huns. Of all that was happening in the world, Agathius knew between 553 and 558 AD, while he was a young man. He tells us, for instance, of the rebuilding of the great church of St. Sophia by Justinian, and he adds, if any one who happens to live in some place remote from the city wishes to get a clear notion of every part, as though he were there, let him read what Paulus Silentiarius has composed in hexameter verse. The history of Agathias is valuable as a chronicle. It shows that the writer had little knowledge of geography, and was not enough of a philosopher to look behind events and trace the causes from which they proceeded. He is merely a simple and honest writer, and his history is a business-like entry of facts. He dwells upon himself and his wishes with a minuteness that might seem self-conscious, but is really naïf, and goes so far in his outspokenness as to say that if for the sake of a livelihood he took up another profession, his taste would have led him to devote himself to the muses and graces. He wrote in the Ionic dialect of his time, the best edition of his Historia is that of Niebuhr, 1828. Those of his epigrams preserved in the Greek anthology have not infrequently been turned into English. The happiest translation of all is that of Dryden, in his Life of Plutarch. On Plutarch, Keronean Plutarch, to thy deathless praise does martial Rome this grateful statue raise, because both Greece and she thy fame have shared, their heroes written and their lives compared. But thou thyself couldst never write thy own, their lives have parallels, but thine has known. End of section 24
Recording by Nicholas James Bridgewater. Recorded in London, England.